Good morning, class. I'm looking forward to learning something new with you today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a nice uh, Easter break. I hope you enjoy this new classroom with flags and um, we have an icon of the Banaya, which I'm not going to post up, but uh, you just know it's around. And we have our digital students. So um, you know, any questions before we get started? Well, that's more of a statement than a question. Um, is there going to be an assignment? Uh, yes, there's going to be an assignment. It's going to be, uh, you have to write an advertisement and you have to use 15 of the vocab words in the advertisement. You're going to write an advertisement for sunglasses. Either you invent your own type of sunglasses or make your own company or just make an advertisement for sunglasses that already exist. Um, the sunglasses can have magical properties. They can be whatever you want. Just make an advertisement for sunglasses using at least 15 of the vocab words. So now let's start. Who would like to start reading? Okay, elephant. Okay. Most people who wear sunglasses might say they wear shades to protect their eyes from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays or to ward off glare. They aren't Prevaricating? Prevaricating, yes. What does that mean? Well, let's go over that first sentence. Okay? So, shades. That's a common term for sunglasses. Let me see. I have a pair of... If I look at my guitar, I put shades on my guitar up here. Um, shades, they... Uh, it's just a slang term for sunglasses, but that's how words change and how words develop in languages. Maybe in a hundred years, that'll be the common term because they create shade on your face. Um, ward. Ward off. Forward. Backward. Okay. Ward off. Glare. Prevaricating. So we have right here from the etymology, it's to transgress. A back formation. Um, it literally comes to walk in like a crooked way. And in church Latin, uh, it's Latin as used by the Catholic Church, um, to transgress, to, to, it usually comes mainly like from the, the term from a, a false accusation. It's pretty much a fancy way to say lie. Um, but you know, and in the Bible it says, I will not bid false witness. They don't say you should not, thou shall not lie, thou shall not bid false witness. Say something how it wasn't said. But it's basically pretty much a way to say lie. Um, but more the connotation is a false accusation or um, telling a fake story. And if you look at what we have here in your textbook, it says to lie, tell an untruth, mislead on purpose. So that's a good one to look at um, to know exactly why this word exists. Like why not just use the word lie? Um, his reputation has suffered because of his unfortunate tendency to prevaricate, stretch the truth, equivocate. Equivocate isn't exactly the same. Equivocate is kind of to say two things are the same that aren't the same. Okay? It's like, oh, um, why am I in trouble? Um, just because I burned down the, the shed. I mean, Johnny, you know, he broke a pencil yesterday. Can't really say those are the same thing. That's equivocate is a different word. And the antonym is to tell the truth. A whole truth, nothing but the truth. And prevaricating is getting away from the truth. Not the, if cause it says to walk crookedly. So if the truth is going this way, womp, 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 prevaricate is, whoop, where, you know, wherever is convenient for you. Well, continue, elephant. Those are the most popular reasons people wear sunglasses. But the coolness factor is another reason. With so many shapes, sizes, and colors to choose from, just about everyone can pick shades that look stylish. But modern sunglasses are a far cry from earlier models. Wow, that sounds interesting. Who would you like to continue? Zebra. People today might not relish wearing the sunglasses of the ancient Inuit. We learned about that in the other, um, uh, earlier, remember? Um, the Inuit wore sun goggles made from bone ivory and wood. These were fashioned into eye coverings with slits so the wearer could see these goggles were functional. 
but not exactly a fashion statement. So you see these are functional. You can see right here they're wearing it and it's just kind of creating much more shade. So it's more like a shade than you because if you ever go on, if you ever been on a mountain where it's snowy, the glare comes from below and from above and it can blind you. So that's what they wore. Looks like Star Trek. Uh, it looks very futuristic. Roman emperors used a more glamorous way of protecting their eyes. Does anyone know what glamorous means? Yes, bear? It means fancy? Yes, it means kind of fancy, luxurious, glamour, glitz and glamour, like a very fancy way. We could look that up really quickly. Where that word comes from, I'm just curious. Defines usually pattern, an alternative spelling of chiefly in the US. Okay, so in English, they spell it differently in England. Magic enchantment, the phrase, the cast of glamour. A Scottish glamoury magic. So it's it's um it means kind of magical. Okay, so it comes from that term. But glamour, as we spell it the American way, though this this is an English dictionary. Um, oh no, they spell it the English way in this book too. Um, but uh. It's basically a fancy. So anyway, let's continue. Of protecting their eyes. Supposedly, the Emperor Nero shielded his eyes with pieces of emerald. But lowly citizens were not authorized to do the same. So authorized, what does that mean? So let's look. We don't have to go on the dictionary. We see authority, right? So we... Oh, wait. I can't block it off. So if you look at author, that, that comes from the word. It's the same as authority so you're authorized is you're given the authority so it's like you have detention as a, t a teacher is authorized to give detention but if let's say um one student told another student let's say uh elephant is like hey uh hey um zebra you have detention elephant isn't authorized to give zebra detention so it's and let's look up here, what it says here, it's um, to approve or permit, give power or authority to. So given the authority to do something. And usually you're authorized by someone in charge. So in Rome, the emperor would authorize you to do something. Um, on dress down days, you're authorized to wear whatever you want. Um, students who will hand out books are authorized to go get the books by the teacher to do the same even if they could afford the gems yes okay in the 12th century chinese judges hid their eyes behind planes of smoky quartz crystals to appear detached or more impartial so impartial that's not one of our vocab words but that word there means because if you look at the two words im and partial so im means it's a negative like in i think we've gone over that before im is like in not and partial, like a part. You're not in one part or the other. Like partisan, a party. So if let's say I broke up the class into two groups, um, and I were to say, hey, um, who wants to judge the the contest? And if I choose any of these, it's, if I choose Zebra, he's going to say, well, me and Zebra win because he's going to be partial to his side. Okay. Now, let's continue. So they, they did that so they don't show their eyes to look more impartial. The judges could immerse themselves in the trial without betraying their thoughts about the alleged culprit or witnesses. The gesture quashed any suspicion that they were taking sides. Now, I don't know if it really did quash any suspicion that they were taking sides, but uh, let's go over these words. Immerse. So this im is a little different. This M, M is basically saying we're inside. So let's just look right up into immerse. And it's to plunge into a fluid. Basically to be soaked in something. Um, similar to douse, but you're in it. So when you jump in a pool and you're totally under the pool, you're immersed in the pool. I like to immerse my Oreos and cookies. And that comes from the word... Let's see where it comes from. Transitive, um, immersed to plunge into. Um, 
Nurse related. Immersus, past particle. Okay, so culprit. Culprit, we don't need to look up too much. Culprit just means the person who did it. Culprit is the person who did it. Okay? Uh, or the person accused. Now, alleged basically means it's a way to say he's accused. So whenever you hear this in the news, you're going to hear this a lot. Uh, in America, we hear this a lot because we are innocent until proven guilty. And so if you, whenever we talk about a criminal, unless they've been put into jail, they're an alleged, they've, is this even recording? Oh, the alleged offense. It is recording. My face stopped. So, okay, all these stuffed animals we can't see anymore, but we're going to continue on, okay? Okay, alleged culprit. Okay, now let me just expand this since we can. Okay. And quashed. Let's go to quashed. It basically means uh, crushed. You can't see. Like this quashed. I'm going to be. To crush, to put down completely. There is no way it happened. You don't believe it if it's quashed. Okay? Okay, so that's quashed. Okay, so we're gonna just do that. We're gonna move forward. Actually, this will be a good time to make a break. So we're now, no, actually, we're gonna finish the taking side. Centuries later, sunglasses similar to modern shades were developed. Around 1750, British optician Okay, so that means an eye doctor. Okay. Uh, I think it's op optician, so optical. Opt is eye, optical, or near. I think opia is an ancient way to say eyes. Optician and ishin is optician, designer, and inventor. James Asikoff experimented with tinted lenses. Tinted basically means, um, like if you see a car that's darker than others, uh, that's a tint, okay? So let me look at, let me just put uh, tinted mirrors. Uh, images right here. You'll see, uh, let me see more. So you see this one's a little tinted, that's less. It's how much tinted, and I'll put tinted windows, that's probably the best. Not mirrors. You see, that's a tint. So, and like your sunglasses, essentially today, are now tinted glasses. He dissected and remade existing spectacles, another way to say glasses, to create shaded ones. He was trying to connect specific eye ailments, while to correct specific eye ailments, while he might have felt his early efforts efforts pathetic. Now we learned about pathos, to have passion, but pathetic usually means like, I mean, you think you've heard it before, like, like, like so pitiful, like, but it's also pit marked by a strong emotion, especially pity and sorrow, able to move people emotionally worthy of pity, woefully inadequate or lacking. So pathetic is kind of like means it was a pathetic sight to see so many starving people desperate and begging for food. But even here, you see in the sentence they use begging pitiable heartening so it's like please when you say like that you're being kind of pathetic because you're like oh i can't go on without another ipad or something okay he persevered that means move on through difficult times although as isakoff isakoff was not designing the glasses for sun protection he is still known as the father of modern sunglasses now we usually use that the father of something something is a guy who started some something like a founding fathers um so he persevered and if we go down into our textbooks persevere is to keep going when something is tough okay so we're gonna as part one is done let's go on to part two how do i stop this